Hello, I'm Rachel from Bunny and Thread and today down at Sewing Machines UK in Gillingham I am going to be looking at the Juki TL2020 PE Platinum Edition. Um, so it's a fab straight stitch machine, it's got a really solid heavy metal body so it's a great for great machines for doing heavier fabrics and, and going at speed as well. Um, so the Platinum Edition, it came out um, in the US and they made a limited number of these machines as like a sort of special edition. Um, and now it's available in the UK. So I'm quite excited to have a, have a play, have a go with it. It's got some really nice features on it, like the pre-tension um, that you usually get on an industrial machine. You have got the built-in spool stand here as well. Um, you've got your cutters, needle up and down button, speed control here. You have to use the foot pedal, but you can limit the speed that the foot pedal does um, so, you can, so you're not running away with your um, foot basically, you're kind of reducing that. You can drop the feed, um, you have got your knee lift and a table which I'll put on again in a second as well and because it's kind of got that crossover between an industrial and the um, domestic side you've got the industrial kind of threading system so your bobbin goes underneath uh, this way and your needle they're standard needles with the flat back but the flat bit goes to the body of the machine rather than the back so there's slight differences there with domestic machines you've got a nice kit of um, feet as well, accessory feet, and a few bits and bobs here, and you also get this fabulous certification of authenticity here as well. So you get, with your number of your machine, everything on there. So let's have a look at the machine. So I'll start by threading up the machine. I'm just gonna thread, uh, put some thread on the bobbin. So on these bobbins, you've got a little cutout part on there. So you just wanna line that up with the little notch on your bobbin winder at the top here. So I'll just pop that onto there. Give it a little jiggle round till you find that notch. There we go. Okay, and then I'll take the thread up into the spool stand and we want to go like a sort of cross with your thread like this so this is your tension for your bobbin so i'll just do that again quickly so it'll go in front of it and then around but give it a good pull so it's right into the tension because otherwise it's not going to be doing what you need it to do basically so we'll just pop the Thread into that hole. Okay, and then I'll just pop that back on. Just check there. That little notches. And then we can push this in. So that's engaging uh, the bobbin winder. And then we can put it down. So I'm just going to trim that little loose thread off there and I'll carry on winding the bobbin. There we go, and it stopped automatically as well when the bobbin was full. And if you find that 
I mean, this has gone on really nice and evenly, so that's perfect. But if you find that you're, it's not even across the bobbin, then you can make an adjustment as well if you need to. But that's all in the instruction manuals if you need that. So let's pop this off here. Let's cut that off there. Okay, so it's an industrial style bobbin case. Um, so what you want to do is make sure that your bobbin is going clockwise so when you pull the thread it's turning like a clock would turn okay so that's the way you want it to go um so we'll pop that into here and there's a little cut out part there where your thread just goes in and then pull it all the way around and then that should stay nicely in there and again you can adjust the bobbin tension if you need to but it's worth probably trying trying it out first and then you'll need to get into the side here to put your bobbin into the machine and you can open up this bit here and then pop that in. I might just trim that off a little bit so there's not quite so much thread. There we go. So I'll go and thread the top thread and the needle. So from your spool stand up here, take your thread straight down to these guides here. Um, so these ones you can kind of tailor to what you need for the thread that you're using. So this is just the normal standard thread. So we can go through the top, the first hole here and then the third hole, but you can use that center hole as well. So you're using all three. If you've got like a nylon thread, a difficult thread to, to use, um, because it, sort of helps just to keep the thread in place where it needs to, to go through the, th the thread path. Um, and then you've got your pre-tension here as well. So your standard pre-tension setting is where the, the screw in the middle here is flush with the, with the dial. Um, so you can just take your thread through the tension, give it a little pull to make sure that's in there. And then we can go down to the main part of the tension. So with your, with this tension dial here, you want to make sure that your foot's up. So I'll just lift it up and down so you can see the tension discs moving open and closed here. So you want them open so the thread can sit inside the tension discs. And then we'll take it around here through this little guide here. And then we'll take it down again around here, into there, around the take up lever, into there again. So all the way around and then down to the guides nearer the needle. So take it from here down to here. And then you've got a guide to the left hand side of your needle threader. So just pop that back into there again. There we go. And then you've got a guide in there. Now your needle threader, so you need to pull it all the way down and it kind of catches the thread here as you pull it down. So it catches it on the way down. And then the hook, so because the needle is has gone in sort of at a 90 degree angle to a domestic machine, so the flat back is 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 going this way. Um, so you need to just think about where your eye of the needle is and where the hook is for your needle threader. So the hook's going through the eye this way from right to left. And then what we're gonna do as well is just put my foot down so it gives me a bit of extra clearance to get my thread underneath. Take your thread underneath there so that it's in the guide and then just gently let the thread go through the needle and there you've got a loop that you can pull through so the thread goes through from left to right so that hook is going through this way you need to get your thread in there and then that allows the needle thread to pull the thread through the needle So we're all closed up, ready to go. I'm gonna put the wide table on. Uh, so just a little bit about this. So it's really sturdy actually. So you've got this sort of honeycomb effect underneath. And another little tip is you can put your knee lift, store it away under here if you're not using it. So, uh, so that's quite handy. And they literally just slides on. So you've just gotta go over your knee lift there. I'll just grab my threads out of the way. And that's on there like that. And because your bobbin goes in this way, you've got this little door here that you can open up to access your bobbin without having to remove your table, which is really handy. 
Uh, let's just pop all that back down. There we go. You've got adjustable feet as well. So if you've got a wonky table, you can adjust the feet as you need to. Um, but it's nice and secure. Um, and yeah, let's get sewing. So that's just some calico to start off with. I'm going to put a foot down. Um, and I've got my stitch length here. So it's set to three at the moment. So um, you can adjust that as you need to. Um, and yeah, let's go. So. So it's a really, really fast stitch on the machine. Like I said earlier, you've got your your rabbit and your a turtle there to sort of indicate whether you're going fast or slow. So if I set it to like a medium speed and then go full pelt with my foot, it's only set to that speed. So it limits the speed that your foot pedal will do, which is really handy. But if you want to go top speed. So, and then I'm just going to use the heel kick function I mentioned earlier and just press down on the heel and then that cuts the thread off for you. So it's a nice, neat finish and super speedy. Really nice curve actually when you go that fast. You can, you can get really steady curves with your sewing. So I want to try a few extra, um, some difficult, more difficult fabrics than just your, your plain old calico. So I've got some denim here and old pair of jeans and um, some really thick leather as well. So normally I'd recommend you change the needle, obviously for leather especially, you'd, you'd use a different needle for, for those kind of fabrics. But we'll give it a go and put it to its test. <laughs> So in your accessory box, you've got some extra feet and accessories that you can use. So this one is a uh, straightforward and magnetic fabric, guys. You just pop that onto the bed of your machine and then position it as where you need to, to give you the right positioning for your fabric. You've got your walking foot here, uh, a free motion embroidery foot. You have got a narrow zip foot, a hinged zip foot there. You have got a smooth foot, um, so great for leather. So I'm going to have a go with that with the leather actually and just uh, see if that helps to glide over the top of that fold. Um, we have got a hinged guide which will give you a 1.5 millimetre uh, seam allowance there. You have got two of these compensating feet, which I really like actually. So they're great for um, sewing on the edge of fabrics where you need, there's a bit of a step down. So like um, down the seams of jeans, that kind of thing. Um, so you'd sew like this and then the, it's compensating for the, for the step. Uh, so this one gives you a seven mil uh, stitch and then this one will give you a 1.5. So this one's a narrower one. Also it's shorter as well. So if you need to get into tight corners and things with your stitching, then this is the one to go for. And then we have got a hemming foot, so a rolled hem or a narrow hem. Um, so you can use it without the, the hinge there as well. So it helps to with different layers of fabrics. And then the last one here is a concealed zip foot. 
a plastic version there so it's again it's a bit easier to sort of glide it through um, and then your channels for your zips go underneath um, so there we go so these are all you attach them on directly onto the shank of the machine um, so you just need to unscrew this large screw here on the left hand side and then that will come off there we go so that's your normal foot there i'm just gonna pop this one on and i'll, I'll have a go with some of the compensating feet as well because um we've got some of this denim fabric which will be good to to try it with so make sure that's all the way up and hugging the the shank nicely give that a tighten up and then give the leather another go so i i cheated a little bit here i mean i thought it was a bit mean of us to to try this because it's quite thick so if you look here the the leather's quite thick so you're actually giving the thread a much longer journey to pass through with with these three layers of this thick leather so the first try that we did it, it the stitches obviously got smaller because the thread has got further to go so with this one the second attempt i went through um on three millimeters and then when i got to this thicker area here i just changed the length of the stitch slightly so that the the thread has you've got more thread to go through the leather so the actual outcome the stitches look more uniform going through and then changed it back again as i stepped down from there uh, so that gives you a much much nicer stitch you can adjust the, the stitch length as you go but i think this will help as well because leather can be a bit sticky so your smooth foot will help with that as well um so let's give so again i'll stop here i'm just going to change my stitch length a little bit as we go up there and then go back down again to three and I've also got my backwards uh, lever here so I can lock off and then scissors so that did glide much better actually uh, using that so again you've got the more uniform stitch lengths there going over the thick leather so next what I want to do is use one of the compensating feet to stitch down here so i've just got this old pair of jeans that i've cut up uh, just to show you the sort of step um, thing here so this one is a single layer of denim there and then under here there's three so you've got the seam and the top uh, the main part of the fabric here as well so you've got a, a decent step down there so the compensating foot is going to really help to keep in line with that fold and to also make sure it's all balanced because what you don't want is a foot to be kind of wobbling on a on the step there so I'm just going to change the foot over again so take the smooth foot off and I'm going to go for the larger compensating foot so this one here so it's just going to sit on here like this so this compensating part there is just going to go on the single layer and then it's just going to glide along here so you're using the fold as your, as your guide um, so I'll put that one to here and this is going to give me a seven mil kind of gap from the from the fold to the stitching uh, so it will stand out really nicely especially with this red thread um, so that's on there like that and then we'll pop the fabric underneath I just want this to be in line with the fold uh, so I'll just pop my foot down okay I'm just gonna slow it down a little bit so it doesn't disappear so I'm just keeping that nicely in line with the folded edge stitch really nicely down there and it goes through this like like butter really it's lovely lovely to sew with
so that was the Duke ETL 2020 PE Platinum Edition. And I actually really like this machine. It's it's really nice to use. It's uh, the speed of it is fab. I really like how you've got the limiting uh, function here for the speed. So uh, you can reduce how the, your, your maximum speed with your foot pedal. Um, also the foot pedal with the cutter was really good. Just want to explain what this gadget is here. So this helps your um, your foot because your foot pedal, I'll just grab the foot pedal here. So when you're sewing, you do your normal action like this, but you've also got a, a heel kick function which will cut the threads. So sometimes you might not want to cut the threads. So what you can do is you pop this underneath and that stops the foot pedal from doing that heel kick function. Um, so if you, for whatever reason, you don't want to, to cut the threads by accident, you can pop that on there and then you're not, you can kind of rest your foot on it sort of thing without having to worry that you're gonna cut the thread halfway through stitching. So that's quite a nice little extra uh, that you're, you get with the machine as well. I like how this is all in one area. So you've got your stitch length adjustment here, your scissors, your needle up and down button, and then your backwards as well, your lock. Um, it's just all really handy and accessible here. And then your foot lift, at your, sorry, your um, feed dogs, you drop in your feed dogs here as well. So that's just a really quick switch over uh, to enable you to do free motion embroidery, which is really nice actually on, a, on this kind of machine to be able to do that. Um, and everything else is really straightforward actually. So threading up was nice. It's great that you've got the extra pre-tensions here and um, everything is really clear to see what you're doing um, and even this little thing here so this is your foot pressure so you adjust it up here which is kind of normal but to be able to see your foot pressure I'm not kind of used to that with your domestic machines you just sort of turn it and, and, and try it out kind of thing but to be able to kind of see the indicator on there is really nice as well um, and the needle threader it's just it's great fab. and the table's really nice and sturdy a good size as well um, so yeah, it's all round, it's a great, if you're looking for a straight stitch machine, it's great for things like bags, um, the heavier fabrics like your leathers, denims, that kind of thing. Um, so it's just a, yeah, really sturdy, strong straight stitch machine. So if you'd like to find out anything else about this machine or drop in for a demo, give the guys at Sew Machines UK in Gillingham a call or visit their website at www.sewmachinesuk.co.uk. I'll speak to you again soon.